Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing a brand new product in New Zealand, the Wim Pro Audio Streamer. This amazing multi-format streamer is taking the world by storm. It features support for Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, Qbuzz, Airplay 2, Chromecast, to name just a few. It's so easy to use with a complementary sort of app that allows for both multi-room control and setup with absolute ease. The Wim Pro sits in the middle of their streaming range, at the bottom with a little puck called the Mini, and above this one with a better DAC called the Pro Plus. This particular one is probably the biggest seller for those that are wanting to smarten up an old amplifier, with the Pro Plus offering a better audio quality for those that are going to be a little bit more aware of the potential of the streamed audio formats that they're listening to. Um, as I implied, it, it, I mean, look at the, look at all of the things that it uh, uh, um, streams. Everything is supported. All of the major formats supported right here. It's a wonderful little product, and with that, uh, it's compact. It's nice and easy to be able to put it off to one side and control if you wish. It's relatively light. Anyway, let's have a look. Full color box. Uh, Wim Pro, and stream like a pro. Uh, we've got an, a, a color pictorial of the product itself, along with the remote that's included. We've got some basic information associated with Spotify, Apple, Airplay, Chromecast, and Alexa, HD audio, and as I alluded to already, some of the things that it uh, supports as far as Spotify, etc. And of course, important in New Zealand is the iHeartRadio. It's got the WIM logo on both sides, and on one side, scan all information associated with its serial number. On the back, it talks a little bit more about some of the accessories and some of the compliance that is associated with it. Uh, and yeah, it's a very, very straightforward product. Being in the middle of the range, it's worth mentioning this one is utilizing a Texas Instrument DAC. Runs at 24-bit 192 and um, has a quad-core processor on board with um, 512 megabytes of, of, of memory. It means it's snappy to operate, it's quick, uh, it's relatively light as far as its network requirements and things like that, so it's really easy to use, it's really stable, and honestly sounds brilliant for its price. So, let's have a look. Opening it really, really straightforward. It's got a couple of little sort of sticky tabs. Now, there's an, a, a, an implication you can pull those tabs if you want to, but you know me, I like using my craft knife. Opening it's really straightforward. The packaging is uh, a tight fit, so you just sort of let it slide and let gravity take over. Get rid of its box. The first piece of information is we've got a quick startup guide associated with uh, using its remote control. Uh, important as far as its connection and placement. And then the comprehensive sort of user manual, well, quick start guide is what they call it. Um, with a product as well thought out from an app perspective as this. The need for a really in-depth product manual isn't really there. It's so well thought out and supported that all of the usual things that you might try and set up a more complicated product are thought out for you, and it's, it's, it's so easy to use. It's just so easy. Okay. Uh, by the way, the packaging is very well thought out as well. Little things, so as we want to then take this uh, Pro out, there's a little plastic tab, and it's kind of thought, you know, they've, they've thought about this, they've thought about how you would unbox it and get it out, and it's nice to see that little subtle things have been thought about. Uh, putting that off to one side just for a moment, we see the bottom. Now this is probably the most surprising. For a product so competitively priced, so cheap, let's be honest, for something that is delivering everything from an audio quality and streaming capability, you're expecting them to scrimp somewhere. And why they are not scrimping is the accessories. So as we drag that accessory box out and get rid of the final packet, we get to drill into some of these cool little things that they have um, uh, delivered to you. Right, so 
Firstly, it's the remote control. Now, the, uh, the Mini doesn't come with a remote, the Pro and the Pro Plus do. Now the remote itself, oh by the way, this bag is 100% biodegradable. So I've thought about some of those little things as well. Right, so the remote control. Firstly, uh, it has four presets. Um, it has an input selector, a mute, and some basic um, buttons associated with volume up and down, skip, play, and pause, right? But it's also got a microphone on board. It's got voice activated and will support the Alexa uh, sort of home ecosystem. Um, opening the remote and putting in the batteries is very, very straightforward, as you can see. And there's a scannable part code there, too. The next bag... Uh, is for the USB cable to provide power, and it's a USB A to C. Then we've got a fiber optic cable of modest quality, and it's got little rubber caps to protect the ends. It's a Toslink cable because the output from this device uses a traditional Toslink uh, SPDIF um, digital out. There is a New Zealand USB power supply, uh, obviously USB um, A, with more than enough current to drive the unit itself. And the final bag has a surprisingly good quality 3.5mm uh, to 3.5mm cable. Now, you might choose to improve it. In fact, I probably recommend you should because the capabilities of this product shouldn't be disregarded. Nevertheless, subtly, as you look down the end of the cable, and again, as always, hang around for the photographs, what we've got is a very subtle indication of the white and red associated with the outputs from the unit itself. Then we see the, the unit. Now, it is protected with that little plastic cover that I alluded to. Getting it out of that is very, very straightforward. There's a couple of tabs to sort of unstick. And then we can get rid of the packaging. Now, the front of it is pretty muted. Uh, this is a, a plastic box. Um, it runs dual Wi-Fi. Sorry, yes, yes, dual, dual band Wi-Fi, so 2.4 and 5 gigs. Um, it's a relatively lightweight product. It's all chipset designed, so the quality is there internally, and they have scrimped on the external side of things to keep its cost down. You will forgive everything that might be bad about its, um, its box when you listen to this product compared with everything else in its price point. It's at least half the price of most of its competition. And so any of the design issues, any of the lightweight things that people might say about this product, forget it. It's stunning. If you don't like touching it, put it underneath everything else. Put it off to one side. Don't touch it. You've got an app to use it if you need to. Nevertheless, looking at it, by the way, the illumination at the front and uh, the tricolor LED, these are really easy to see. Tricolor LED is three colors, lets you know what's going on. We've got minus and plus associated with volume. This is sort of touch sensitive. We've got play, and then we've got uh, the ability to select the inputs you might want. The WIM logo, which is kind of cool, looks similar up or down. That's a nice, nice little touch. It's not very deep, it's not very heavy as I alluded to. The base of the product has one of those sort of grip pads on it, so it won't move on the surface that you put it on. And it has the WIM Pro on the bottom, along with scannable information emulating the serial number that's on the box. It's the back of the product that you really see quite a surprising array of inputs and outputs, certainly for anything touching its price. Firstly, we see a network cable. Um, now, this is an important network socket, I should say, but nevertheless, it's an important feature. For anybody that's streaming things, you should really try and bring as much wireless chatter off your network and cable it when you can. Beside it is one of the things that is unique to WIM. Along with the equalization and all sorts of features within its software that is making this product utterly perfect, we see the support for a subwoofer. 
It means that this could be utilized into an amplifier and then you can adjust crossover and equalization associated with a subwoofer output. We see a small trigger output allowing it to uh, turn on larger products or at least alert an amplifier to come out of standby. We see an SPDIF optical digital output and beside it an optical digital in. This has a brilliant analog to digital converter on board as well, so you can use this as a multi-room source if required. There's the microphone associated with its voice control and then the USB-C for power. Above all of those digital ends we've got the analog line input and line output very clearly labelled and again emulating the colours associated with the RCA cables I touched on as far as left and right. So all very, very simple. So there we have it. The mid, uh, middle of the range, exquisitely priced WIM Pro streamer. Unboxed here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.